this is a, an Alstom 132,000 volt circuit breaker. Uh, it's fairly common these days. The interrupting and insulating medium is sulfur hexafluoride gas, not oil. It, how it works is up in the top section, there's a copper rod which moves up and down. From there downwards, it's, there's an insulated rod, rod, really tough fiberglass usually, because you've got to keep that away from that. That's all earth and that's live. So insulated rod there, big copper rod, electrode there. Now, what happens when the brake closes, that moves up. And I've made, here's one I prepared earlier. The rod up the top, actually, well this is a rake handle, but it looks very similar to that. Through about the same diameter, round top like that, that's all copper. Yeah, these are some old contacts from an old 22 kV oil breaker that I found in the shed, spares. Now, what happens is the copper rod up the top passes right through there, go in there and out there. So it can slide in and out. I don't know if you can see them. You see the contacts in there? They push on it. So it goes up and down, but always mains contact. Yeah, that's in the center of the breaker. At the top of the breaker, you'll have something similar to this. Again, this is not out of that big gas breaker. Uh, the top of the moving contact gets jammed down in there and they're spring loaded con <coughs> there's a lot of tension on them so when it pushes in that's really tight and it's making really good electrical contact in there if it didn't have the spring tension <sighs> you'd be flat out she'd be flat out carrying 50 amps because of that spring tension it's good for 3000 bit of a reach here but the breaker at 20 degrees Celsius should have 6.4 uh, bar of pressure. That's the black dot on the dial. Yeah, the gas and H pole, they're all joined together for those yellow pipes. Each phase, there's the other two phases there. There's this one. They all go into the gauge here. Uh, you yes, say so if there's a leak, starts leaking gas for some reason, pressure will slowly come down until it hits, I think it's about 6.1 bar, then it'll raise an alarm which goes to the operators and tell them, oh, we've got a leaky breaker, go and fix it. If it keeps leaking, usually it's a slow leak, gives you time to come out and fix it. If it's a reasonably fast leak, what'll happen is the pressure will keep coming down, hit alarm and keep coming down until it hits what they call lockout. What that does is it disables the tripping and closing of the circuit breaker. Yeah, the whole poles are full of gas, but the braking part is in the top section. And it must have the correct amount of gas in it to quench the arc. If, you, if that was on load and had no gas in it, or just very minimal, and you went to open it, nothing stopped the arc, and it just destroy, absolutely destroy the circuit breaker. So the lockouts prevent, if the brake is closed, you don't trip it, you can't trip it, you have to isolate, take the load off somewhere else. If the brake is already open, you don't want it closing and then not be able to open it, so it locks out the closing as well, so the brake just won't operate at all with no gas, without the correct amount of gas in it. This is the brake next door to the other one, it shows the mechanism much better. Yeah, here we have, that's the closing spring, that's the tripping spring. You'll see the closing spring's charged all the time. That's the charged, discharged indicator. The tripping spring is not charged, you'll notice. What happens is, okay, our closing spring's charged. Just get rid of that. Um, when we get a close command, that releases that and goes whack, slips right down. That drops down, pushes everything up, closes the breaker. As soon as that spring hits the bottom, it starts the motor, which starts recharging the spring. So this here will 
on the clothes, it'll go whack down and then do, 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 back up to the top till it just goes over centre and that's where it's then it stops. When it closes, goes down, it pulls the trip spring up and charges it. So that'll go up, lock in position, brake is now closed, ready for a trip. So when you get a trip command, bang, that slips, goes back down real quick, opens the breaker. The mechanism, they're linked up inside here, but it's only one way. That will charge that one, but that one has no effect on that one. Here we can see the, the DC motor goes up through all the gears and winds the closing spring up, charges it up in there. If for some reason you want to close, charge the springs, you haven't got any power, you stick a big crank handle in there and wind her up, hence the manual spring charge. Looks like my riding actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else we got? Oh, there's auxiliary contacts which operate as the breaker operates and there's normally closed, normally open and they just use them for various things in the circuits indication to tell relays inside when the brake is open for instance uh, here we are, they're the two trip coils there's two trip coils in every breaker That's, everything's doubled up so they're the two trip coils there the leads coming in, the that's the closed coil up there. There's only one closed coil, but two trip coils. We have some control relays here. K9 there, that's the contactor for the motor over the back. These two, K10, K26, they're the lockout relays for the gas. So they're held up now because there's enough gas in the breaker. If the gas leaked out, they'll drop out and isolate the circuits. The third, the fourth one, K75, that's the anti-hunt relay. Anti-pumping relay, sometimes called. What happens there is, just say for instance, there's a close impulse coming into the breaker and it's stuck on. And there's also a trip coming out from inside and it's stuck on as well. Without that 75 relay, the breaker would close, open, close, open, close, open, until it just fell to bits. You know, a thousand operations later, she's flying in pieces. No. What happens with that is, if the close impulse comes out and is stuck on, that relay holds up, it'll allow the breaker to close once, and then lock, then block the closing impulse. So, say so you get your closing impulse stuck on, yeah, breaker will close. The trip impulse stuck on, breaker will trip. But because the close is stuck on, is on all the time, it's held up, she won't reclose. So it'll go close, trip, and then that's it. It'll stop. Oh, well, there you have it, folks. A bit of a look at a circuit breaker. Any questions, just leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll, if I can answer them, I will. So, right over and have a good day. I'll catch you later.